Okay, so you ran into the sewer last time you were playing. Can you remember what happened right at the end of last game? Mm. Wasn't there some squeaky guys? Mm, there was some squeaky voices nobody tended to understand, and then I believe... Yeah, that's I believe you rallied everybody into rushing forward. Yeah, so we formed a defensive line and put the magic users at the back and... A defensive line? <laughs> Yeah, all the fighters out front. Yeah, but you ran into the place. I would hardly call that defensive. <laughs> Preemptive defense. Ah, yes. The best defense is a good offense. Yeah, they won't be expecting it. No, of course not. Right, so that's right. So you, last week you came... Well, not last week, the last fortnight you came across the city of Beale. Uh, you found the bills separated um, by a river. You got uh, ripped off by an old codger on a bloody barge. You got ripped off by an old codger on a barge because you wouldn't um, go into Northern Beale. He tripped you across. Uh, you met some bandits. You kicked the butt of some bandits, and one of the bandits told you a way of getting in. What was that? What was that bandit's name? I don't remember. What have I done with my stuff? Was it Bolvort? Oh, we lost Tom. Yeah, he'll be back in a tick. Leroy Popperlot? <laughs> Leroy Popperlot. Oh, I've got it here. No, I haven't. See the Bolvort? No, uh, it's definitely not Bolvort, so it's got to be Leroy Popolot, I'd say. Leroy. And he's the newest member of the Flaming Beam. That's right, the Flaming Beams. Now, in fact, I think I've made him a corporal due to his skilled leadership through the sewers. He showed you the way in, so that was pretty cool. Leroy Popolot, that's definitely him. Leroy. And if it's not, it is now. See, we don't have James, who's our note taker. Actually, did he put anything in notes? Uh, the journey to Beale, <laughs> explosion killed by Ogre, the fight at South Beale River, the Beale Ferry prison. Notes. Leroy Popolot. There we go. The mer oh no, he's the merchant. Okay. Uh, South Beale Suva, Private Colin. Right, I better better write some stats up for Private Colin. Oh, that's right. The actual mercenary group, the full name is the Burning Beam of the Radiant Palace Company. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> it says so on the notes. Okay. I wouldn't lie to myself. No, of course not. Uh... So what is he? Corporal Colin or Lieutenant Colin? Leroy, wasn't it? No, no, Leroy was the merchant. Oh, so I got to Are we in Beale? You are we're in, in the sewers right? of Beale. Yeah. Yeah, we're supposed to go to Beale, that's right. Pretty much. So when we rush around the corner in a defensive line, ready to surprise them defensively, what do we see? Uh, well, I'll tell you once Tom comes back on. Muted. I'm now unmuted. Oh. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I can hear you. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to create Private Colin quickly so he can join you in the battle. Uh, Colin. And it won't let me. What? They're not going to. That's the right Well, they, more stats they might talk. I'm not going to say that they're not going to talk, but you never know. Um, as you rush forward at the urging of Captain... Negotiate me. Captain... Captain... What's your last name, Captain? Hallway. Hallway. Light fingers. Oh, God, why? I should have known that. Um, you rush down into the sewer and you see that there is a junction ahead and you can see a large number of diminutive figures um, moving along in that direction currently and you're charged with candles held aloft um, oh yes attracts the attention of some beady black eyes and you hear 
and they sort of stop and turn in a defensive motion. You see the gleam of metal blades hidden in the darkness. And one of them steps forward. It seems to be a small furred dog-like creature with horns. Mm. With horns. With horns. Mm. And he. Um, the goblin. He looks forth at you and he says something in the language that you're completely and utterly unfamiliar with. Raising his blade high, he goes. I bet you can't say that again. Close enough. Close enough. I'll let it go. Close enough. Do we actually know what he is? Uh, do any of you have sort of un any underground sort of skills? That, you know, do, were, were your backgrounds an underground miner or a Gong farmer or something similar. Astrologers. Or... Astrologers got their head in the clouds. <laughs> Never a gnome when you need one. No. True. No, I don't think. Let's go guy with the arcane signal branded on his cheek. Uh, he um, used Spellburn, so Spellburn improves your chance of using uh, of using uh, magic. So you can say, I'm going to take yeah. X amount of Spellburn. And we rolled on the random Spellburn table, and that meant he had to brand the symbol of a patron on his cheek. Okay, so, well, he doesn't seem to speak much more than whatever I do, so which is nothing. So, we'll say, I shall say, as leader of the burning beam of the Radiant Palace Company, mm -hmm. who forth are you, you villainous creatures? Well, that's well, a pretty good role that, play. That's very tactful if you're wanting to make, like, one of those nice uh, negotiation charisma <laughs> Um and I'm not known for my charisma either. The one that, oh, my intelligence for that matter. The one that is standing forth, which seems to be the most colourful of these beings. They are all grotty, horrible little creatures that seem to wear some form of um, armour, but not terribly much. Just big piece of meal and stuff. This guy actually has some colours, some reds and blues and stuff like that on his on his uh, tops, which seem to be some kind of um, badge of office. And he steps forward, and you can see he struggle with his words. But he go, but he looks at it, and he goes, blah, 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 Bogo, name Bogo. Well, Bogo, I'm Hallway, and you don't want to mess with me and my men. You and ladies. Oh, do, 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 do. let's have a perception check all round, which I've got to remember how to do, because I'm bloody useless. Uh, I do believe I think it might be an intelligence check, but I need to check. There's a perception trait. You see? No, that's no, yeah. no, that's personality. Oh. Ah. Well, that's... Comes under it's near skills somewhere. It says, "Hey, these are making it here we go common." Searching and spotting is an intelligence check. Can I have an intelligence check from each of you, please? You did that deliberately. <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> oh, even better! Oh, my God. Okay, Miki. Uh, and Flilalelo Flilali. Um, you both notice that in the darkness you're counting probably 20 plus of these small figures whilst the rest of you see can can see about 10 of them well if I can only see 10 it seems like a fair fight to me uh, well, yeah Bogo sort of steps forward and says ooh you I shall step forward 
and tell him again that I am Captain Hallway of the Burning Beam of the Radiant Palace Mercenary Company. Mm. I'm the boss. Mm. Bogo is going to have to. Big boss. Bogo is going to have to make a check on that, I think. Big, big boss. Big butter boom boss. Butter boom. <laughs> Yep, okay, let's get Gobbo up. Bogo, sorry, Gobbo. Gobbo, he's everywhere, he's everywhere. Yeah, thank God his uh, voice box isn't. Um... He's been everywhere, man. <clears throat> he's been to Wollongong. Okay, he points his sword directly at your chest, hallway light fingers, and he says. Captain, who you work for? No one. Work for self. I am boss man. <laughs> <laughs> what here for? City one job. City. Find a way to the city. You pay? Yes, the silver. if you can lead us. Silver pieces, if you can lead us there. No, singular. Stop giving these plural silver pieces <laughs> away all the time. One. How many fingers has he got? How many fingers has this little guy got? Uh, probably about four, I'd say. Oh, well, that's only four silver pieces then. Max, so don't worry about it. He's got two hands, he'd be eight. And he might have toes. <laughs> well, only hold up one hand, you foolish captain. <laughs> and I've got five fingers. Anyway, we're offering him, I'll offer him, I'll give him two, two if you can picture me holding two fingers up. <laughs> two silver pieces if they'll take us to the city. I'll hold out two silver pieces to glint in the flickering candlelight. Okay, Bogo moves forward towards you rather swiftly for a creature of his size. As he uh, atro approaches you, you can smell like a strong sense of filth off him. Like, I mean, yes, this creature apparently does live in the sewers, and that's what he smells like. And Bogo reaches out with a, a clawed paw of sorts to take the two silver pieces. One now, yeah. one later, Captain. You know that shit? Oh, well, that sounds good. You sound like a very intelligent, uh, non-commissioned officer of material. <laughs> <laughs> you can put me in charge of the money if you want. So I will flip one coin into the air toward him. Okay, he catches it. Oh, well, hang on. Let's see whether he does. He is nimble, though. Let's give it. Let's go that. Uh, and roll one of them. Oops. Most people can manage coin catching. I'm, I'm trying to make it easy for him because none of us want to lose a silver piece. No, nah, he catches it. He doesn't have a, a terribly brilliant opposing thumb, but he does catch it just and slips it into a pouch. And he looks across and he starts speaking in that squeaky voice again. And you can see um, at least a good two-thirds of his party, which you now all see clearly is about 30-odd beings, um, head off the direction that they were heading when you first entered and Bogo and a group of nine to ten others sort of point you guys in the direction or you all in the direction of the other pathway which it appears that they've just come through very well we shall because I'm completely stupid follow his instructions <laughs> oh that's a bit harsh Poor old Bogo, he's a trustworthy old fella. Um, of course he is. You see they take up positions, uh, five in front, five behind. Bogo's out in front leading them. Um, they don't ever sheathe their weapons. So I'm imagining that you, you yeah. lot don't either. Probably not. But he takes you down an arrow sharp... Um, uh, what sort of weapons has he got? 
Are they really sort of small blades that you've not really come across before? They're not quite daggers, they're not quite short swords, and they've got a serrated edge upon them. Ooh, wicked. Hmm. Um, do they have any shields? No, they have no shields, but they do have um, sort of plated lamellar sort of leather armour, sort of, it's quite patchwork, but large leather pieces that are stained together um, by staples. Okay. Mm. And they all sort of move fairly silently along the, the path. You see that um, the sewer narrows quite deftly along this way, and the it seems to come to a point where water is pouring into the sewer and there is actually no sewerage anymore. In fact, you, you walk past a portion of the sewer that is fresh water um, rather than fresh water with poo samples floating through it. Uh, and you see that he climbs up a small rusted ladder right near the, uh, the entrance of the water and he taps twice on an area above. He looks down at you and say, and just holds up three fingers as if that means something to you and slips through the uh, trapdoor above. Hmm. Is that it a little bit? Three minutes or? You don't know. What are you doing? That's what, that's what he does. I'm open to ideas because I'm a stupid idiot. As you um, lead, as you, heroic leader first. As you speak out, there is a fair bit of um, mutter amongst the others that he's left behind, and a fair bit of showing of blades, and you can hear a low guttural growl that's very similar to a dog's. Sounds like we need to follow, so I'll go up. As you move towards the ladder, two of the guys step forward with their serrated blades and they bark and and yip a little at you. So they're standing in the way. Yep. I'll stop. Okay. You halt and wait for how long are you going to wait for? Three minutes. Okay, you wait, um, and after about two or so minutes, you uh, see the trapdoor above open again, and a, a muted sort of light from above, and the and. Boggo slips out and climbs down the ladder and he looks at you and he goes up oh, there silver uh, hey, the man, captain <laughs> and one of the guys ask, call for volunteers to go up and have a look ah, ah, silver I'll hold the silver out but I'll say checking ah. You can see the fur on the back of his neck actually goes up and hackles like a dog. Give him a copper piece just to tell him to hang on. No, give him the bloody silver either way, here or we're not. Highly will go take a peek. As Highly moves forward, you see a couple of the 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 um, dog-like creatures fan out to sort of get in the way of him and start <laughs> and hold out weapons at him. Throw him the silver. He grabs the silver, and with that he sort of makes a point of sticking it in his teeth and biting it, and then he yips out, yips out something in his language again, and you can see they all sort of step out of your way and start streaming back up the sewer. Bye. See ya. Don't forget, we are members of the beaming, the burning beam of the Radiant Palace Company, at your service. Mm. Who's first up the ladder? The captain. Wasn't Libby going up? No. Oh, sh <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very well. The captain shall lead the company forward. Okay, Captain Hallway Live Fingers, you move your way up. You can see that the uh, the trapdoor that's ahead of you is now open, and you can see that there appear to be torches or. Perhaps a lantern above the flickering light of either oil or candles or torches. Uh, plays a mute glare upon plastered walls. Are there people? Um, 
from your stance at the moment, you can't really see people. Are you preparing yourself in any way, shape, or form? Other than making sure my whatever it is that I use for a weapon. Hang on. What do I use these days? Short swords. Oh, my short sword will be ready. Okay. You climb with your short sword up, making. Are you attempting to do it silently, or are you climbing? Oh, well, I'll be reasonably quiet. I'm doubt that I'm actually capable of doing anything silently, but we'll we'll be no more noisy than we have to okay, be. Okay. No worries. Uh, give me then a D16 oh, plus X bonus. 16. Where's that under? Uh, it's probably what? under D. Saying, I found it. Oh, good. D8? Is that under the D8, the D16? No, it's under D20. There is no Dex. Under D20. Oh, you okay. mean agility? Agility, yeah. There you go. Okay, you clamber on up, quite quite literally banging your sword quite heavily against the metal rung ladder, making quite the awful racket, but feeling that you're doing it reasonably stealthily. You um, climb up and sort of look into the gloom of the room, but you can see sort of there are several hanging torches, and they're the a candle on my helmet. <laughs> um, I forget I see that it melted onto my top of my helmet. Okay, uh, the candle on top of your helmet is actually the least brightest light in the room. As you look up, you can see that there are lanterns, unshuttered lanterns, uh, deliberately placed high so they actually find your eyes when you first step up and over. By the time that you... Um... The dimmest light in this room is me. Yes, <laughs> which is a sad thing. By the time your eyes adjust and you reach your hands up and grab the edge, you see four other figures, each with wicked black blades lowered at your head. They seem to be elves of some form, though elves of extremely dark colour and pale hair. Oh, We're willing to pay. Uh, you see one laughs and says it is amazing how many of them say that. It usually works. <laughs> if, you, uh -huh. if you were willing to pay, you would have come in the honourable way. Or the honest way. Well, we came in, we paid the dog people. That sounds fairly honest. Mm. The uh, kobolds certainly benefited well. They received our slave wage and your finder's fee. I let go of the ladder and drop. Okay. Um, nobody was going up right behind him, I hope. No, it didn't right. sound like they were all just dumping me up there. <laughs> okay, you can make an agility check for me as you hit the ground, which is about 10 feet below you. Woohoo! Okay, you actually land and, and roll coming up. You think, oh, God, I'm amazed I did that. That will inspire the troops. Okay, what are you doing? You, you see your hallway, Captain Hallway Light Fingers hit the ground, rolls, and comes to his feet. Short sword ready. What happened? It's a trap. It's a trap. For a moment. Prepare to fall. For a moment, Captain Hallway Light Fingers appears to have a fish head. Hey? Admiral Akbar. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, that's fun. Start. Prepare to fight, company. Star Wars, Admiral Akbar. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Mark, even if they don't. Mm. Anyway, um, okay. Uh, Captain Hallway Light Fingers calls out. Prepare to fight. <laughs> oh. Return of the Jedi people. Who is it? Okay. You... Dark elves. You... Evil. You can see a figure begin to climb down the ladder quite um, non in a very non-rushed sort of way. One would almost suspect Mark had been reading old modules or mm. new ones. Have I? No. <laughs> okay. Mm. I'll, I'll agree with you. but well, I get my... If he's going to take his time, I'll get a bow out. Okay. Well, he's like, by not taking his time, it's Ten feet, it's going to take him about a round to get down it. But he seems... I'm oh, not well, quite I... evil elves, sorry. Alright, well, I go up to him and... 
whacking one as not while he's defenseless. Okay. Uh, Why don't you try to talk to him? Mm. Would Hailey know anything about him being an elf? Hailey uh, can make a d20 roll. Yeah, um, the elf that comes down the, uh, hang on a moment, I'm just writing in a couple of things. The elf that is coming down the, the ladder currently certainly appears to be one of your underworld brethren uh, who are mistrusted amongst the higher elves that roam the uh, lands above. In fact, they are quite evil, but... Mm, yeah, you, you're surprised to actually see one this close to the surface. Hmm. I'll, I'll warn everybody. Be very alert and wary. Especially I mean, saying I'm about to stick my sword through his butt. <laughs> and tell him these creatures are evil, these elves are evil. Hearing that, Mickey will want will cast protection of evil on um, hallway. Okay, we'll get to that in just a tick. Uh, just, oh. Hey, okay, for just a minute. Yep. Okay, bear with me again for just a moment. enough voices. I keep expecting other voices to say things. Yeah, I know. We're a bit short tonight, but there you go. We can adjust. Apart from the fact that I can't seem to find the picky that I want, but there you go. Uh, There we go, that'll do. Okay, um, so. Uh, you run up, oh, hang on, first of all, Miki is going to cast protection from evil on you. So, Miki, give me a spell caster thingy, me whatchamacallit, whatchamacallit thingy. <laughs> A spell check? Uh, yeah, that's one. As she calls to her god. Um, nothing happened when I double clicked on it. Uh, where are we, Mickey? I just opened a little magnifying glass. Oh, hang on, no. Oh. Nope. Spells, protection from evil, nothing in there. Spell check, level plus ability, mine. On that, ability, no. Where's the spell check roll? Spells? I don't see it. There's, there's just an empty box. Yeah, that's, that's not cool. Spell check, level plus ability. Is it on a different... Oh, uh, from Protection from Evil, without the, um... Without the... Oh, God, Mark, think, think, it's hurting my brain tonight. Um, without the magnifying glass open, you'll just see that there's D20 and next to it there's a zero plus. Sort of thing, you, with, with yep. a dice on it, you just roll that. And no, I um, thought I had your spells in, but apparently I don't, so I need to go check protection from evil. 
Uh, protection from evil <laughs> five. That's a failure. Uh, Earth. But I didn't roll. Didn't you? Oh no, I did. Sorry. Um, you go. Ooh, seventeen. That does something. Protection from evil. Um. Okay. General duration, customer time, um, self or more. Actually, it only operates on you unless you get a certain effect. Uh, however, it does affect you, and it's going to give you a plus one bonus saving throw uh, made against evil effects, evil creatures, undead demons, and anything else unholy to your fate, which this thing definitely is. Um, and if it attempts to attack Miki, it will do so at a negative one attempt. Role. No, I cast it on highly. On, yeah, on, I know. I, cast I, it I know, on... but it's a personal thing that will affect other people if you roll high enough. That's the way magic works in Dungeon Crawl Classics. Did, it, did I roll high no, enough? No, you didn't. Oh crap! So you're protected, mm. but your holy symbol definitely glows as you cast the spell. So perhaps Captain Hallway Lightfingers feels. A little bit protected because he sees your holy symbol glow in response to your words to your god. Uh, wow, well, I'm inspired to greatness. You are. <laughs> Let's roll some initiative. I need to put a couple, uh, some of these fellas in. So, where are we? And you want to drow kill everybody? What game did you want to play next? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, don't be like. I'm sure we'll find the burning beam of the Radiant Palace Company will not die at this fight. I have the new tunnels of goals too. Right, so let's roll initiative for everybody first. Actually, menu initiative. Roll. I have none of this negative talk in the ranks. Okay, so Aaron, oh, hang on. Let's have a short rest too. Right now, let's let's Thank roll initiative that. again. Right, oh, so Philalelo, Philale, Private Colin Malcolm, looking up, Mark Sinclair, Lieutenant Quinny in the fair band, Highly Flies and two dark girls up top, do nothing. Captain Hall, or hallway light fingers, acts the same time as Miki Zemmel. Miki Zemmel casts a spell. Her holy symbol glows. Uh, um, a magnificent light blue. You feel a warmth in the room with you as the uh, magic of the god is expelled. Captain Hallway Lightfingers, what are you doing? Um, it's Dark Elf 6 if you're looking at the combat tractor. That's coming. I'm sticking my sword into his okay, buttocks. So you make an attack against Dark Elf 6 by grabbing your attack dice and dropping it I'm on him. Dark Elf on and dropping it. In the contract tracker, if you drop yeah. it on his line. Oh, I can hang on. There, you can. there they are. Okay. Okay, and you jab him in the buttocks. Well, there you go. So, oh, I didn't talk about um, doing a daring deed of dutiness. Uh, no, you didn't. You should have done too, although your combat dice didn't come up, so you still could, mind you. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, so where, what are the options? I've oh, hang on, your D, your D did out. come up. D dice did come up, sorry. No, no, that was my damage roll. Yeah, no, but it did actually come up in the attack. Oh, right. Okay, right, well then that was my damage. Okay, and, yeah, Which... ooh, ooh, that's not good. That's not looking terribly healthy for him, you. Well, that's what happens when you get stabbed in the buttocks with a short you sword. You stab him in the buttocks with a short sword, and you can see you actually cut open at an extremely large wound. You've also terribly amused my 11-year-old son, and my mother, uh, my mother, my wife, um, also is doing a dance of pain and going, ooh, there you go. They think it's hilarious. Ooh. Uh, right. It is. <laughs> <laughs> You can see one at the top as you... I have an audience! I have you an audience! You have an audience and they all think it's terribly amusing. Um, you can see the Dark Elf <clears throat> uh, gets ready to drop off, but above a dark shape draws back his longbow and fires at you. 
Ouch. Uh, where are we? Uh, That's alright. I'll use the dark elf between me, me and him to hide. <laughs> okay, I'll give him a, a, a negative because of that. Where are we? Where's that? Uh, uh, help if I actually put some damage in. And... <laughs> Right, so where are we? He, oh, there is no targeting in this, is there? No, in effect. No. Space and rage. Okay. Has Fantasy Grounds got Rune Quest or Tunnels and Trolls like uh, module or whatever you call it? Uh, I think there is a Rune Quest module. For it. Okay. Oh, this is no good. No, no good at all. Okay. There's a Savage World module for it. Hmm? Savage Worlds, yeah. There's... There is a Savage Worlds module, Definitely. yeah. Because I bought okay. it. Okay. It's your fault. He. Well, sorry. I'm not really. Sorry, not sorry. I know. Get down to this one. Draws out his. Oh, well, if you hit with a long sword, he's going to hit with his long bow. Um, oh, I'll roll it again. I might miss you, I suppose. Oh, what a guy! Uh, oh, actually, I've got to give him a negative modifier too. Oh, actually, he goes down a dice. That's what it is. So. That six and he goes down to a d16 to, to, to attempt to hit you. Oh, and that's a fumble. Oh no, it's not. It's 19. I'm assuming that hits you, Captain Hallway Lightfingers. Yes. I can't see that. Uh, oh, haven't I got it set so you can see my dice rolls? No. Attack 13, so. Oh, no, hang on. Yeah, I missed that one. I rolled the wrong dice, so we'll go there. We'll go a six. Down here, we'll make it a. A D16, and we roll, and we get 18, which I think is enough to hit you with his longbow. Captain Hallway Light Finger. Well, that's not very friendly. I told you not to fight the Dark Elves. Don't. They were going to turn us into slaves. Not if we ran away. Okay, as he just wings you with his bow for one point of damage. The elf that you've oh, lacerated oh. the butt cheeks of um, lands yeah. on the ground and draws out his longsword, snarling at you, and he says, You'll all submit now. How come they get to attack? Uh, out of turn. Of course, they were coming down. Well, no, they weren't out of turn. You only can see Dark Elf 6 pretty much, and he was coming down the ladder, and Captain Hallway and whatnot basically were the first to go. So, Aaron, however, sees number 6 and decides to follow his captain. Captain, oh, Captain, he says. And realises he has no ranged attack, so he runs in with his longsword. Oh, Jesus Christ, where did he get a longsword from? He's always had a long longsword. We'll have to confiscate that. And he lashes out with the longsword, catching him a beauty. In the other butt cheek. Um, and the elf drops to the ground straight after his snarling demeanour. Uh, carved in heart. Right. Fill a la la la, fill a la la He's a wizard. He's a wizard. Cast a spell, go on, I dare you. What was that one he used to use? Like a chill touch? Uh, he's either got that, I think he's got magic missile as well. 
Shoot the archer! Shoot the archer! Magic missile the archer, that sounds good. Okay, so you need to make a spell check. Um... Next to magic missile? Yep, pretty much. Okay, 10, which is, I believe, a lost result, but I'll double check. It's a failure. It's definitely a fail, I'm not sure whether you've lost the spell or not, though. What, what page is that table on? Uh, what, for his spell? Yeah, for the spell loss. The, ro the roll Well, it depends table. on the spell, but essentially you've got to get 12 plus to succeed. On a level right. one, on a level okay. one spell, and magic missile, which I've just completely and utterly missed. Hang on, level two, level one. Here we go. Magic shield, magic missile, and eleven is lost and failure. So you can check that off on his sheet. There's a little checkbox next to it, you check right. that off when you lose it. So you can't cast Magic Missile again for the day. So he mumbles the words, but nothing occurs. Private Colin Malcolm draws back his short bow. Says, don't worry, Captain. I'll get him. And... Uh, How much luck do we recover? Oh, we've got, I've got none lost anyway. Uh, oh, look at Belgrath you only does. gather it, I uh, recover it on a going level up, I believe. Nothing. Nothing. Right. Okay, he fires his longbow at the Dark Elf and misses Belgrath. God damn, Colin. Sorry, Captain. Ex Corporal. Ex Corporal Some Colin. Private Colin. He could have been a Corporal. I'm Belgara. My God, they should have told, said something. I'm, I'm sitting around. So, burning hands. How, how um, I've got this marked. What sort of range? Flaming hands. Sorry. Flaming hands. The range is 15 yeah. feet, which would leap up and through the roof. It's only a, only, flaming hands. Only yeah, a 10 foot ladder. All right. So he'll try. He'll try and throw flaming hands up the ladder at the, the archer that's got me in for his thing, so I drop that on the elf. Which elf is it? Uh, it is... Where did I do all the setup? I'm sure I did all the spell setups for this stuff. Um, it's number 23. 23. Okay, you get an 11, which oh, is okay. also a lost result, so you lose... He'll spend a lot of time. To go to, to, go to 12. That? Yep. Yes. Single blast... All right, so that'll be. It does one d three points of damage to him. One d three. Well, that's exciting. Three points of damage three. to him as the flame burns through, and you hear a curse from the dark elf. Mark Sinclair. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, give me a hide in shadows roll. Move back and hide. Just under abilities. <coughs> Should just need to double click. Oh no, you might need to drag the plus one into your modifier and then roll a d20. Yep. Okay. That way? Uh, yeah, it did. Gave me a 12, but you don't, didn't have the plus one on it, I don't think. No, yeah, because I put it in the box. Okay. Um, 13 it is. Right, uh, okay, so 12, okay, no worries. He attempts to hide in the shadows. Quinian Fairbairn is... James, isn't he? That is. Yes. 
James has what in his inventory? Lieutenant. Ooh, he... <laughs> yeah, Lieutenant James. Don't worry, Captain, that corporal is an embarrassment, he says as he leaps forward with his short bow. Oh, oh I'll God. take care of him. I'm inspired by the bravery of this company. Okay, and you see that the halfling's weapon fires through and strikes the dark elf standing at the top of the stairs, causing him quite a grievous wound, actually, bedding itself rather deeply into his shoulder. Uh, oh. Holly Fleisen! Holly Fleisen! Oh, Holly. Highly well, shoot, shoot, uh, which one's the closest? Uh, you can only see one character one up the top. Which is? Number 23. 23, mm -hmm. okay, she'll just shoot. Does she have anything to shoot with, or he, yeah, does she have anything to shoot? A squirt bow. Oh, very nice. Okay. Okay, clatters yes. off the roof and falls back down below. Didn't even go through the hole. Highly's a little bit high strung. Um, you see with it a dark elf, one of the dark elves simply leaps down with long sword in hand with a show of bravado. Oh, lands perfectly and lashes out at uh, probably, who was the one that cut the other guy down? Arand. Lashes out with the long sword. Where are we? Let me see. There we go. At Arand. Uh, striking him for. Oh, only a narrow wound as Aaron ducks under it and it only just grazes him. Who's next? Ah, another one. See, another one starts to climb down the stairs. You're going to have to get through the one that's just landed both feet down in front of them. Captain Hallway Light Fingers. Well, well, quickly look at Daring Deeds of Duties. Mm -hmm. And we'll go for a disarming attack if he manages it. Okay, no worries. Uh, that, and which one? Oh, it, auto, it? it automatically rolls for you, it's all good. Oh, okay. Okay, so your deeds are plus one, so it's not enough. Okay, so you do damage. Oh, nasty hit! Indeed, it's a nasty hit. Great points of damage on one that jumped down. Okay, you see he staggers but doesn't fall. Although you do you do see you cut through your subdermis and you can see the intestines below this slash. I will also call out that every man's expected to do his duty and not hide in the darkness. Very nice. Righto, so on to Miki. Um, how, how are we supposed to reach the higher numbers on these spells if all we have is a d20 to Eventually, roll? as you go up in levels, you gain power. Oh, okay. Crap. And you can also spell burn, so you can go, I'm going to use spell burn, um, which means you'll take damage off your other stats to increase the power of the thing, or you can use your luck as well. Okay, um... I have to roll it. No. <clears throat> okay, I'll just attack with my hand back. Okay, against number nine if you want to drop it on him. Okay, he darts to the side, holding his stomach as the blood flows through the wound. The other one up top uh, looks down, sees the mouthy captain and aims his longbow at him. Uh, 
screaming, Mouthy. <laughs> Bang, Mouthy. Alright, let's go. Okay, he fires down and yet again another arrow strikes your captain. Why is it doing that much damage? Hang on, no, that's that's not right. That's better. Uh, and this time sinking in uh, qu almost to the heft of the arrow, to the, the haft of the arrow. It, oh, the feathers on the arrow as it strikes down into your captain's shoulder. Ow. Aaron lashes out with his longsword again at the wounded uh, figure before him. Going for the glory, he attempts to bring him down but misses. Flalalo, flalali. Hmm. <coughs> the other spell. The other spell. Chill touch, colour spray, which one? Yeah. Uh, chill touch, I reckon. Right, I. Go for it, give me a check. Oh, a funny tattoo or whatever. Right. Where did that character go? Hey, what happened before? What's going on? That's weird. Let me close mark. Double click on the layer. And click on the you want me to roll it for you? I oh, know, it looks. At... Yeah. Hang on, you back on. Alright, chill touch. You gotta drop out. Well, it says That's user. Right. I'm not it says kidding. user has gone AFK and then user is back. Right, and I double click on the layout, it doesn't seem to work. Is it like. Well, there you go, you got a 16 anyway. Uh, your your oh, hands are charged with negative energy. On the next round, you receive a plus 2 to attack rolls, and the next creature you attack takes an additional d6 damage. Okay, okay as you. Literally charge cool. up your chilled hands with negative energy, you evil, evil mage. Uh, we come down onto Private Colin, who says, oh, oh, sorry, Captain, and he jumps forward with his light blade, attempting to take out the guy that you've practically gutted already, and misses poorly. Belgarath, being you, Kevin. It is. Excellent. Right. Well, I'm going to go with the... Uh... So, can I burning hands the guy who's down without burning everyone? You lost burning hands, didn't you? No, no, not me. That was somebody else. <laughs> uh, Belgara. Because I got a hit. I did, I did a die three damage. Oh, that's right. You did too. No, you added your luck to it, didn't you? Um, yes, so, yes, yes, you may cast flaming hands again. Ooh, now, now I've lost, lost it. Now lost it. Pick him off as lost. Yep, beautiful. Okay, Belgrath again <laughs> attempts to burn the Dark Elf. Seemed to, to really scorch him, but nothing occurs. So we move down to Mark Sinclair. Nobody seems to have noticed him. Well, that, that might just be because he's not being violent at the moment. Well, that's good. He's going to stay not being violent. <laughs> So he hides in his shadow, thinking he's done a good job. Yeah. Right. That's right. Quinian uh, draws the short bow again and aims up at the archer above. You shall not take our captain, he calls. And fires at the dark elf. Narrowly missing him, the arrow whizzes past the dark elf's skin. And the Dark Elf sneers back at the horrible halfling. Highly flyzen. So can she... Can I attack 23 with my bow? Wait, I picked up the wrong thing. Oh, that's a fumble. Roll your fumble die. For me. Um... 
Is that on your main page? Uh, Fumble combat? die, main page, oh, combat page, top left. Roll, roll the d4. Yes, you get a four on your fumble die. Uh, what's the table? I think I've got the fumble table in. I do. Four on the fumble table is your bowstring breaks. Um, snapping so the short bow cannot be wielded unless you spend ten minutes repairing it. Whoops. Whoops a daisy. No, actually, can I put that to screen? Where are we? Fumble. What's that? I don't know. It's sounds. Making some, making some sound effects. <clears throat> yeah, I can't make it go to screen. Alright, um. Right, so, but yes, your bow breaks. The bow string snapping and looping upward. Uh, the one that's wounded stabs forward at the captain with his long sword. Actually, uh, oh yes, I suppose the captain did it to him, so let's have a crack. Uh, okay, but the, the blood slipping through his fingers, you see he's turning pale and he misses. Uh, the other dark elf comes down, draws his longsword and lashes out at Aaron, seeing also a, 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 a wielder of the longsword, he decides that he is the most dangerous target. And flicks out his blade and nimbly at him, striking him. Four. Oh, in fact, cutting Aaron down, you see, he just drives out with the, the blade and Aaron falls to the ground. Uh, oh, I got my long sword! <laughs> Captain Hallway Light Fingers. So, is there time to pick that long sword uh, up? Only if you. Oh, do they have any. Yeah, no. Doesn't matter. You'll get it matter. later. Okay, so. Yeah, we'll get it later. We'll continue attacking. Okay, you lash out, he ducks to the side. Do remember also to mention what you're doing with your deed die just in case it comes up. If I don't say I'm um, all, I'll continue what I've said before, which was okay. the disarm. Uh, but you missed regardless. Mickey. Mickey is going to use word of command on yes, number three. Is it going to failure? Right aim. Except three. Right, the last elf up top with the bow fires down at that horrid, horrid halfling. Uh, where is he, horrid, horrid halfling? And you see the bow shoots down, striking him for. Oh, dropping Quinny into the ground. You see, uh, it goes straight through his leg. And Quinian rolls over, howling in pain. And it's about that time that Aaron dies. Oh, man. Fla-la-la-lo, fla la la um, Is there anyone in range of chill touching this? Uh, yes, there are a couple of elves, Dark Elf 9 and Dark Elf 3. So you can make a melee yes. attack against them, which is, I believe is on your main page. He hasn't dropped out as being, like, not um, allowed to be used by me, has he? Nope. Uh, he shouldn't be. Hang on. Philolilo uh, Philolilo, he's up there. Let's have a look at the characters. So double click on him and nothing happens. Lolo Philly, well, hang on a minute, I'll clear his owner and go and select him again from the character sheet. Alright, now it comes up. Alright, so I need to make 
just an yeah, attack but roll. you also need a plus two because you get plus two to your attack with the chill touch ability. So in the modify box, go down, click it. When it says adjusting, type in two, and then hit enter. I think yep. maybe I don't know, and then you roll your dice. Okay, he's a little bit nervous though, and he slaps out like a, uh, uh, like a, oh, yeah. no, I didn't want to say that because we've got a lovely girl in our group, <laughs> slaps out like a kobold. kobold, um, yeah, okay, that's the best I've got, slaps out like a jellyfish looking for love in all the wrong places. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, missing, he's, he ducks back a little bit scared of the, the elves around him. Moves on to Private Column. Good game, this time keeping his mouth shut. He simply attempts to get rid of the elf up top and mumbles. <laughs> Fumble die is this two on this table. Uh, oh, he <coughs> trips, but manages to catch himself before falling prone, and hopes that the captain wasn't looking. He was Belgarath. Belgarath will shoot the archer upstairs with his shot bow. Okay, the archer seems to be having a good time of it. He's smiling and smirking at the patheticness of all of your ranged weapon attacks. Mark Sinclair. Who's the healer? Do we have a healer? Yeah, it's, it's Miki, no. but she totally ignored, you know, your last dead guy, so... Hmm. Well, he's staying hidden. There's not much else he can do. Righto. Has he got a bow? No. He should have. We found lots of bows. Could have had one. Quinian yells out. No, we defeated him. Quinian yells out in pain. Help! Help me! I'm going to die! Highly <laughs> will try again. Shoot somebody. <laughs> she hasn't done very well so far. Ooh. Nope. No, I hit the broad side of a barn in this group. <laughs> the dark elf again swings out. With his long sword. He also notes that Captain Hallway Lightfingers doesn't seem as aggressive as he once thought and decides to attack Aaron. Oh no, Aaron's dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, decides, to, decides to take advantage of Private yeah. Colin who trips before him. Striking him with the long sword. But he. Oh well, Colin won't need, Colin won't need he pain. He doesn't manage to dispatch Colin though. Uh, seeking to... Oh, actually, let's give him an intelligence check. Okay. Um, trying to point out to Mark Sinclair that his absence is not because of his skill in um, stealth. He <laughs> lashes out at him. Catching poor old Mark by surprise, he gets caught by the blow. Oh! And chops Mark down in his prime. Okay. Mark is dying, Mickey. Dying. Okay. <laughs> Captain Hallway Lightfingers, you're going. 
Well, we may as well make a strike at uh, the injured one mm -hmm. in front of us. Oh, my... oh I did oh, it! I did it! Hit. Sorry. I actually hit! I'm, oh, my God! I'm going to need a moment. Oh, look at that! Oh, killing blow! <laughs> Let's have a party. Okay, uh, yeah, nice big fat old hit. You take the elf's head from his shoulders. There you go, you scurvy lot. That's how you kill an enemy. He drops to the ground. I'll grab his head and throw it at the elf upstairs. <laughs> Mickey. Okay, so what can I do to okay, help? Now, under Mark. tables, you will find a cleric yep. lay on hands table. Okay, now Mark Sinclair, mm -hmm. what's your alignment? I think I was neutral. You're neutral? <laughs> I believe Mickey is neutral also. So, now you roll. Now, what do you roll? The cleric's... Uh, spell. So you make a spell check, Libby. Okay, so where is that? Uh, you should be able to just roll. If you go scroll down on the lay on hands table, you should find a dice. Oh, okay, which okay, is completely scroll. wrong. Don't roll that dice. <laughs> All right. Um, go to your character sheet and go to spells. Yeah. And yep. roll. One of your spell dice, like I mean, just one of the dice. It doesn't matter which one. Just roll one. Oh God. Um, and you have disapproval as your god frowns upon you. Oh man. I think. Hang on. I told you you game after this. Last time uh, I had to roll something in that space, I remember now. You know that space has got the three dice on it. Underlay on hands? Uh, yeah, I think you drag up your... Actually, I think you might have to drag up your spell check dice. So you grab one of those dice and... Oh, no, that's not going to work. That doesn't work. Yeah, don't roll those ones. Yeah. <laughs> I just double-clicked yeah, it. I know. Uh, where are we? Bless modifier. Blessing. No, we didn't want that. Five dice, four dice, no. What is your spell check dice? For a cleric. Don't you use the, like, charisma thing? I think they might do charisma. No. Hang on, where are we? Hi on hands. Whatever that is in DCC, I forget the name. 1d20 plus personality <laughs> plus their <laughs> level. So, Mickey has... A minus one personality, so she just rolls a d20. So on your table, Libby, drag yep. up a d20, place yep. it in that box with the three dice. That's what I thought. And then roll that. Okay. <laughs> and we get same alignment yeah. equals two dice. So you get two hit dice worth of healing, Mark Sinclair. Yay. Even though I should really allow you to die and her to be disapproved of, but I'll be nice. Thank you. Because we're getting rolled. Okay, so you find out what your <clears throat> healing thing is. I think your hit dice are what, do you know? Being a, being a, being a rogue, I think it's a d6. Yeah, I'm fairly certain it is. So you roll 2d6 and add that to your hit points. Right. Four and four puts you back on one hit point, I think. <coughs> oh, sorry, back okay. on five hit points, so you don't quite die, thanks to the intervention of Miki and her wondrous god. <laughs> thank you, dear god. Well, uh, Seeing the danger Ilda. of the, Ilda. the Ilda. evil, evil Miki. Uh, the elf above decides to target her with his longbow. 
Oh, that's bad. Oh, that, I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> as, <laughs> as he manages to catch her with a critical. Um, right. The dice will always be out. Uh, right, so we roll one. Well, right, first, let's roll 1d6 on the critical. Okay, uh, the arrow shoots down, taking off the tip of your nose, and it's going to do an extra d6 worth of damage, and you're going to lose your sense of smell for d4 hours. I think that's probably the least. Yeah, smell. That's probably the least thing you should be worried about. Okay, <laughs> first of all, the longbow does one d eight. Okay, and d6. Oh dear. So for the three, right, Miki hits the ground. An arrow embedded in her face. Oh my god. Can I lay hands on no, myself? No, <laughs> no, you fall immediately unconscious and probably die. But let's get to that when we come to it. Full of Lilo, full of Lily. Right, um, colour spray, what can I do with that? Uh, you can fling that over the two L's at the bottom quite easily. Yeah, I think we, I think we might need to okay. do that. give me a colour spray roll. There's only one L for the bottom, because the other one's the archer. Oh, that's right, you killed the other one, didn't you? So you can go for, oh, well, really? doesn't, ah, doesn't matter if you lost it. Yeah. At least it's not a natural one. Little Lalo seems to be finding casting spells reasonably difficult today, upset at the loss of. Crapless of dark Senseless elves. loss of life down here. Col Come on, Colin Colin. strikes up with his light blade at the one down the bottom. Realising he's in serious danger, he actually manages to hit. Yes! Go! <laughs> Oh, for Come max on. damage, he drives the light blade up into the dark elf, but you can see, uh, even though he twists the blade and creates a huge hole in the stomach of the creature, it does not fall. In fact, it reaches down and it snarls at Colum, disgusted at his attempt. Belgarath. Belgarath will try and shoot the guy up top. That's what he's again. been doing for a while, trying to shoot. That's right. That's what everyone's been trying okay, to do. Shoot. Twelve! That's is a it? hit! Uh, I don't know. Is you it? didn't roll it on him. Hang on a tick. I'll tell you whether it's a hit or not. It's mm. not. In fact, it deflects against yeah, his yeah. armour and shoots off into the roof, doing nothing. Mark yeah. Sinclair, recently saved by Miki, who now has an arrow in the face. So, I have a pitchfork, so I like going to get that fork you, you bloody <laughs> 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 All right, no worries. I'm going to give you a D24 just for humour. As soon as that found me. So you can roll a D24 by going right click on the D12. Mm -hmm. And there's Oops. a special dice and there's a D24 in there. Thirteen. Does Mark Sinclair have a plus with his pitchfork? Uh, no, combat. Oh, minus two. Yeah, that's no good. Okay, the guy turns it to the side and laughs at you, but you can see his intention is on Private Colin. Uh, Lieutenant Quinian says, Did nobody hear me? I've got a bloody arrow through my leg. I'm going to die. Imagine the germs, he calls out. Highly. Well, Highly hasn't had any luck with her short bow, so she'll use the dagger. Turns on and go after three. Oh! No! <laughs> oh, yeah. Now bring out in the tables. Bring out the fumble table, and you will roll a d4 on it. So you drag a d4 in there into those three things and then you click on the dice. Do I put it? You mean I click on the dice? You mean yeah, I drop, drop it? Yeah, drop it in that area and then you double click on that. Yep, there we go. 
Uh, your weapon comes loose in your hand. You quickly grab it, but your grip is disrupted. You take a neg two penalty on your next attack roll. Right. He's just not a combatant. He was a great hairdresser once upon a time, but not a combatant. He was never a hairdresser. Okay, the Dark Elf seeks to grab um, Colin by the hair and drives his longsword down into him. Oh, yes. And with a gargle, Colin closes his eyes as he drives the longsword through him. Captain Hallway Lightfingers. No, I shall gain vengeance for poor Colin. This is all your idea, Hallway, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, we could have all been slaves, if you'd prefer. Okay. That's a uh, hit. hit. It'll be a lie. Oh, big four damage. It is a big four damage, and it drops him. The one at the bottom of the stairs falls by his wounds. And you're next, Mr. Archer boy! Miki unfortunately slips into the great beyond, her god reaching out, caresses her cheek, and welcomes her to his realm. Crap. As the one on top fires a longbow down. Who had? Ah, uh, you hear him curse traitor and fires it highly. Oh my god, and hits. Right, <laughs> just. Um. Right. Wounding highly rather badly, but not killing him. Oh, actually, I probably should do a bit of a personality role at this stage. Yeah, okay. In fact, he doesn't do that at all. Um, and just kicks the uh, <clears throat> the thing over at the top of the trapdoor back down and you hear a, a sound as if somebody's locking it from above. Coward. <laughs> okay, there are three dead elves down the bottom line. Call him a dog person fucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. They were kabolds, by the way, those little furry fellas. Elf number, number 23 still alive, right? Yes. And he, he just ran away. He, oh, he, ran. he just locked the above door, you think. So the dead people, there's no way last minute resurrection of healing them? No, because your cleric pretty much died. Yeah. <coughs> you any didn't have any potions or anything in there? Yeah, you know, gear? No luck. Nope. Mark will try, like, uh, seeing if he can pick the lock on the... What kind of weapons did I... No, 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 leave it locked. I don't got to re wound, got to heal up and... Yeah, let them get reinforcements. What kind of weapons did they, the the dead ones uh, have? They've got long swords and long bows. Both of the the th they have um, ten arrows for the long bows, <clears throat> and the long swords are, are black bladed weapons. I could use one of both. Well, if we got more than one, I'm taking a long sword. See, they have. Um, rather elvish designs across them and symbols up the blade. So we have three dead ones, so three long swords, three right. longbows. And you also find that they each have a gold and eight silver pieces upon them. Wow, we're rich. You can afford to pay your way into the city now, Captain. <laughs> Just some sort of sarcasm there, Private. <laughs> I'm putting your money across at the moment, so it's all good. Money's all been dispersed, although the three gold pieces are still in group treasure, seeing there are six of you. Okay. How do you oh, know? So... How do I know what the damage and all that stuff is? Uh, longsword does D8 damage, I believe. Hang on a moment. 
Yes, yep. uh, sounds right for D and D. Yeah, for D and D. Better just double check that it's the same here, and that's what I wrote up. Is it? You sure? Um, it does. How do you put that in there? You add a new entry and then type it in. You go. You go. Yeah. Long sword. Uh, I type that. Oh, hang on a minute. I can do it for you if you want. Where are you? Holly flies and. I got a light pen and longbow, but I can't add the ammunition or the damage. Highly flies, and what class is she? Is she? Elf. 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 She's an elf. Oh, she's trained in long, blow, long swords, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, there we go. Ammunition, armor, equipment. Long sword is definitely 1d8. <laughs> So just long sword, yeah, and drop a D eight in. Yep, that's, yes. okay. that's all good. And then and a long. How do you make a long bow? Uh, does one D six actually? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Does it? Yep. Arrows did one D six. Basic D and D. And. It, what kind is the long sword slashing, piercing? Like an arrows slashing damage. for a long sword. What is it? Slashing. Long bow's piercing. How do you tell it it's a bow? Long bow, long bow's piercing. Yes, that's right. One d six sounds mm -hmm. strangely unusual. I suppose it's just range that's different for a long bow. <coughs> And how do you add in the uh, ammunition? Yeah. One day six in basic ten day. Um when you mark it as range, so when you put your longbow in you see you've got that little sword there. You click on the little sword and oh, it yeah. becomes ranged and then you you change your range to for a longbow it's seventy. Yep. And then you put in your ammo for however many you've got. There was ten for each, yep. right? So there are thirty arrows there currently. So if I, yeah, you might want to decide who's. Is anybody else taking a longbow? I'm taking one, so I'll take ten arrows. Well, how about anybody else? Um, who it's have impractical we got? for Quinian. He's not going to take one. Uh, so it's going to be Belgarath or uh, Mark Sinclair right. or Phil, well, Phil Alelo for Lee isn't going to be trained in it. Belgarath, I think, is what class is Belgarath? A wizard. He's so a he wizard. So he can't use it. Trained. Mark Sinclair's a row, a thief. And I don't think they get training in long, <laughs> long bows either. So no one can use it. So we get 15, 15 arrows, arrows each. each. Yeah. Oh. Okay, and you lay defeated at the bottom of this sewer. Defeated? defeated. We won. Defeated. They ran away. Not defeated. It was a glorious victory. If only that coward hiding in the shadows had contributed more. <laughs> Poor Colin would still be with us. Mm. If someone hadn't decided to attack a superior force when outnumbered, perhaps that would also be the but same thing. Colin, what about Miki, oh, says no, Quinian. No, no. Look at my leg, it's got an arrow through it. There are eight of us and four of them, so when are we I outnumbered? Think, I think you better count again. There's only six of us left, Captain. Yeah, mm. but that the start there was eight or nine. Well, does anyone have any first aid? Not me. Not highly. Uh, does Captain Hallway have some first aid as a caravan guard? Oh, you can make a check. Yeah, why not? Give it a D20. What am I checking? You, you roll a D20. D20. Yeah, no idea. Oh, blood dashes everywhere. If you've got a blood nose, I know to, know to tell you to put your head between your legs. Or is that if you feel faint? He's not <laughs> sure. Use a hanky. <laughs> okay, so I'm wounded too, so 
Well, we may as well test the trapdoor, see what happens. It's locked. So now you want me to open it? Yes, now that we've looked it up and armed ourselves, and yes, I do. <laughs> Let them get reinforcement so that they can kill the rest of us, but okay. Okay, uh, Mark Sinclair, you wander up the ladder and you do a pick lock ability, which gives you a plus one modifier on the d20 roll. Plus four, plus one. One, enter. Let me D20 go. Don't know, you can right click on the desktop and choose the arrange dice button, and that should come back. Oops, that's not wants to roll 20 dice. That's probably not what we want. Arrange dice, there we go. Add your plus one, but anyway, um, you fumble at the lock, and although it's not of the greatest quality, and you can tell that uh, you struggle and fail, it must be because of the way you are perched on the ladder and whatnot. Yeah. Lacking inspirational leadership, mm. <coughs> definitely. Oh, hang on. I handed out gold to dead people. Yeah, don't do that. Oh, we loot them. Hang on. Yeah, Mickey's gone. Explosions well and truly gone. Aaron Cloverleaf died. Okay, so that's the rest there, so I need to add back some one, two, three, four, five, six silver pieces into there. Right on. Right on. Um, so what's going on? Mark's up there, he has a bit of a fiddle. What do you say, Mark? Uh, they've locked it properly, Captain, because you didn't let me get to it earlier. <laughs> well, then open it. I can't. It's not possible. Then get out of the way and let a man do what he has to do. Okay. I use a strength roll to try and, and shoulder my way through the okay. trapdoor. Climb to the top of the stairs and put your shoulder against it. It snaps free the rusty lock above and pops open. Easy. <laughs> yeah, you lucky bastard. <laughs> well, you could have, ju you could have <laughs> just done that before, couldn't you? And like save some time and allow them less time to, you know, if you're that manly. And so all of us would have been climbing up a ladder one at a time while they cut us down at the top. Are you arguing about this now? Apparently. <laughs> but while he's arguing about it, I'm going in with my new longsword okay, prepared. Okay, you leap in with your longsword prepared. You see uh, the elf that was there previously laying against the... Um, the wall bandaging his leg from where the arrow entered. He stares up in disbelief I... as you pop the lock. I slash him viscously. Give me an attack. Oh. No mercy, I'll cry. Remember Colin! <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, me, me, or something or other. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right, Maybe. there's a dark elf there for you to slash at. Hang on, let's go down to you. Okay, longsword attack. Wow, this will be novel. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> He's 
not unhappy about it either. Take that, you dirty, slaying, evil, pointy-eared Vulcan. Okay, and with nearly a, a, a word, the Dark Elf is struck across the throat by the great Captain Hallway Light Fingers. And there's a, a, a slight gurgle and then nothing. 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 So... Okay, you hear from downstairs, Captain. Uh, how am I going to get up there? Did I mention the arrow through my leg? <laughs> oh, I'll help. I'll help Quinn, Quinny and Alright, are there any ropes around? Okay, no ropes, no. Um, well, have a look, quick look around. I've got, uh, well, Mickey had a 10 foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can stick that somewhere and help him get up. Okay, well, you can actually help him up the, the, the ladder with somebody sort of reaching down and dragging him up. He's only a halfling. There is only one door into this room. It appears to be a fashioned, um, guard room uh, and you can see that there are lights hanging from the ceiling but they've been shuttered now uh, and it's completely dark but with the slight bit of light that you've got going on you can see a table um, some dice and another six silver pieces laying upon the, the table Wow, unshutters some of the, the one of the lanterns and it floods the room with brightness and we check the door, make sure it's locked. Okay, the door doesn't seem to have a lock on it. We push something heavy across okay, it. Okay, the heavy thing in here. Can I make a? Can I make a jerry rig a lock? You probably could attach the the lock if you can unpick the lock now that you have some time at the top. Um, you can probably attach it to the door, possibly. So give me a, um, what's that thing check? Lockpick check. Hmm. Oh. Okay, now I've had a two bonus. <laughs> About five of them. Um, <clears throat> like every second roll it seems yeah, to be. Yeah, it's a bit bizarre. Okay, uh, you can't manage to get this lock unlocked though, so the, the best you're going to be able to do is prop up the heavy things against the door. And the only heavy things that you've got are essentially the body of a drow elf and a table. I could try to put in a rune, a rune you, to block. You could. And, um, and nothing can pass through or by the target door, window, or portal. I, I roll that high. Okay, give us a check against your runic alphabet. Okay, so that's just double click in the box, right? Oh, there's a success. Yeah, it's just a loud alarm sounds. Great. A loud alarm. Oh, when, when, when the door is disturbed. So put it on the door. Okay, so at least you'll know if anybody's coming through. And in fact, anybody within a mile will know if somebody's coming through. Right, so we put the dead elf body against mm -hmm. the door for the time being. We might, um, you said there was nothing else really heavy in here? Uh, apart from the table, no. Alright, so we put the table on top of the trap door, plus, because I assume I've broken yep, the lock. You have. And then we spend, uh, Sorry? I was going to say, instead of it, it says it could um, just notify me mentally and not emit a no, noise. You can do that if you want. Yeah, because if the alarm goes off, whoever's trying to get in will hear it. Okay. And spend some time searching the room. Okay, give me intelligence checks for anybody that's joining in on the search, which is not Quinian, who's whimpering about his leg and pointing at the arrow that's directly through it. <laughs> Highly jabs herself in the eye with that same arrow. Well, we got six silver pieces. Did you add that no, in? No, not yet. I'll get to it once you sealed off everything. Uh, nothing coming from Captain Hallway? 
He's not making an intelligence check. Uh-oh. I thought I did. Is there any point? Oh, uh, there you go. Can... There is a point. Oh, no! Critical! <laughs> can I use... Can Hyla use her heightened senses to detect... Not, not with a natural one, highly client. But I didn't use that. Yeah, there it is there. Your intelligence check. Ability intelligence check. One. Um, Captain Hallway Lightfingers, on the other hand, uh, starts laughing at highly, and as he does, he reaches back to hold himself steady because his sides are, are just hurting so much from the amount of laughter. And he feels... A brick give way, um, and you see a door open in the wall that is pretty much um, completely and utterly seamless within the wall. Inso inside, wow. uh, Captain Hallway Lightfingers finds four vials of black viscous liquid in, in uh, essentially test tube sized vials, and a small pouch of gold dust. Hmm. Oh, nice. Black viscous liquid doesn't suggest happiness. Mm. Given its dark elfness, I'm suggesting it's quite bad for you. And they're sealed? <laughs> yes. It's either bad for you or really horrible tasting booze. They, have, the they have elvish written down the side. Get the elf to read it. Hi, Ali, can you read what bad stuff is? And what is it? Okay, it's a, it has written down the side. Oh. Something nasty. Um, bile of a black scorpion. Bile of a black scorpion. It's, a... it's poison. Sounds like. We, don't, we, as members of the burning beam of the Radiant Palace Company, do not lower ourselves to use poison. Uh, we, do if, we do it if we've got to get out alive against evil dark elves. And it's their own poison, so you can't. Like, um, point the finger at us for using your own stuff against them, can you, Captain? Yes, you can. You have to have, take the moral high ground. Groups. Besides which, they're all dead. Does it work if you throw it at something? If you're taking the moral high ground, you would have paid the poor, hard-working boatman for, like, you know, a honest <laughs> entry pass. <laughs> can a gold piece? Pump? If no, you don't not like, like you can take your gold piece and go back <laughs> the other way. <laughs> Is po is the poisoning an evil thing? Mm, generally, yes. Yeah, using mm -hmm. poison's pretty much a, a, I'm pretty a sure pretty bad thing. I'm following the shit with dog people isn't the moral high ground either. <laughs> no answer. Yeah, I'm so, so. not talking to you anymore. You're no longer a member of this company. <laughs> Can the nature you poison? Or do you have to be evil to use oh, it? Oh, look, I'm, I'm fairly certain anybody can use it, but I will certainly question a lawful person that uses it. The gold dust. How much gold do we think is in there? Uh, does anybody have any sort of skills as a jeweller or uh, somebody with fine tastes or something? Maybe Hiley could actually tell you if you were speaking to him. Oh, no, Hiley's okay, isn't it? It's uh, Mark. Yes. That's uh, on the outer at the moment. What was Mark's character class before? Oh, he was a rutabaga farmer. Yeah, he knows nothing about gold. Highly might, though. Rag explains a lot. Do what? Um, Do Highly what? might be able to make a skill check. Give me a D20 skill check. As they ask you to have a look at the gold pouch, telling you how much is in it. Uh, and as a haberdasher, you can automatically tell there's about four gold worth of um, gold dust in there. There's about four gold. Yay! Well, yeah. so the secret compartment is just a second yes. compartment. So, we're all badly injured. What's the options do we have for healing? Um, Lying okay. around with bandages. Yeah. How long would we... Okay, healing. We're in if for you, no, well, if you spend the night making sure you get healing, you'll all get back <gasps> a hit point worth of damage. 
Da, da, da. Uh, well, one's better than one. Hang on, I was on the healing page just a moment ago. Here we go. Character who actively adventures and gets a good night's rest heals one hit point. Um, if you get a day's bed rest, you heal two hit points. But that's not what the case is, so you get one hit point overnight. Is that sufficient to take uh, Lieutenant Quinian from disabled hit to point. active? Yes. Well, I think we do that. I think we rest for a night. Okay, so you all rest for a night, and I think that's probably a good play. Well, I'm only suggesting that to the other members, seeing there are recalcitrants amongst us. <laughs> so you're not asking Mark if he wants that a night off? No, no. Well, as long as they agree, but if they don't want to agree, then we'll have to look at other options. Okay. Uh, um, oh, I don't have any... Im I'll leave it. I'll even stand watch for you. How's that? Oh, that really fills me full of trust. <laughs> Would you like me to count your money as well? <laughs> I'm expecting you'll be doing that anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking my money where rutabaga farmers don't look. <laughs> <sighs> Where's that? In the, in the turnip patch. No, I'm not sure if there actually is a place where they don't look. <laughs> All right, well, we'll call it a night, I think, there, so we can sort of allow James to get back in with his character while it's still alive, just. Uh, <laughs> um, so we'll, I won't say whether you get through that night's rest yet or not, but I think we'll sort of get onto that with the next game. Yeah. yeah, I added the gold and the silver pieces and bits and pieces like that, so, and it's all been transferred across, so your character sheets should all have uh, at least a gold piece on it and some silver pieces yep. and stuff like that. And copper and whatnot. Yep. Thanks, mate. Two silver pieces for the cobalt. There is, um, where are we? There is still one gold piece in party treasure, one silver piece and two copper pieces. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright, so we'll call it a night. That was a, an amusing little game, nice and quick, but yeah. <laughs> I do love this game. Dungeon Crawl Classics is cool, however <laughs> it is reasonably deadly, which I think is something that I need to work on. Um, well, you're not killing people. No, I, like I mean, it, it's <laughs> good to kill people at zero level, but once you get to first level and second level, it should become a bit more easy for you all, I suppose, is the way to think of it. No, well, at first level, you're really Never still within one, one, one attack yeah, kill range. Are, admittedly, getting to second. Oh, experience. <laughs> there you go. I should give out some of that, shouldn't I? Uh, cool. that, was, that was definitely a four. That one's a four. Getting up in there's a two. Uh, so we'll give out. Um, uh, ten experience each. Yep. Wow. That on to Lieutenant Quinian. When do you get to move up? up to 32 now? Yeah, it should be 32. Yes. Although I do need to check whether I'm... What do we need for second 50. level? 50. Yeah, that's right. I do need great. to check whether I'm being exceptionally generous or not between this and the next game. So I'm not sure... I'm generous on... I'm not generous. I'm just not sure whether I just gave you all an amount that should have been split amongst you all or whether it... It's not, but I'll figure that out before next game. Alright, okay. thank you very much for playing. And we'll All right, catch guys. You next, next week. For Night